I mean, sometimes that's what friendship is. It's not going to brunch and doing content with each other and being cute and tagging each other because both of y'all are it girls and you want to be seen together. Some of y'all confuse work for friendship. That's what it is. It's work. That is not your friend. <laughs> Go through something real quick. Hit rock bottom and see if you can give that person a call when you have nothing to offer them. See, see what type of relationship you got then. And quit, quit throwing the term friend out so doggone loosely. Some of y'all got associates and you're barely that. Welcome to the Dirty Back Podcast. I'm your host, Cookie. And as always, thank you for joining me. You could be anywhere listening to anybody, but you love this geriatric activity. So I appreciate you guys. So y'all hadn't had a birthday. Your girl is well in the club 40s now, and I'm feeling good about it, except I can't really walk because my knee is jacked up because I've been out here running up this little black running club here in Dallas trying to be cute, trying to unbig my back, and I done got jacked up. I still have not recovered. It's been about three weeks now, so I'm thinking this is just, this might be my thing to carry for the rest of my life. My knee is jacked up, but it's all good. Now, I got to get into something. Since we're talking about age, there has been this, this discourse online about auntie what age is auntie and um i'm tired of you little motherfuckers and i'm gonna tell you why i'm often confused about who is what age so i will get online i will make the assumption that i am going back and forth with a classmate and you all love 27 so here's my rule of thumb on using the term number one it's not out of reverence okay it's, there's no respect behind it it's ageism and y'all are trying to be funny when you use the term so that's why I personally don't care for it but also just like some of y'all I don't know your daddy I don't know your mama either so I can't be your auntie but if you got to give me a title just give me mama because you my sons anyways let's do that when you see me if you want to call me anything call me mama big mama to be exact some of y'all are aging rapidly y'all turning up at brunch every weekend you you surviving off diets of Hennessy and wings so if you have not drank a glass of water since Trump was in office save the titles just be respectful call everybody by their names okay so now that we can get that out of the way actually no we ain't out of the way with that you young millennials you 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 first millennials and you late 70s babies you are setting your children up for failure. Teach them this, this grown folk business in these streets. So when you throw in shade at folks, be ready for what's going to come to you. I ate somebody's child alive the other day, and it's your fault because you didn't teach them that when you talk crazy, for, when you talk crazy to people, they might shut down your whole existence. Teach your young adults that if you are going to talk crazy, be prepared for what's going to come back. I'm grateful to be of auntie age. I'm glad that I came up in an, in an age of not having access to social media, where when you had beef with somebody or you wanted to talk crazy, you had to do it on site. You did not have the luxury of hiding behind a keyboard, anonymity of a fake profile, none of that. Action was on site. Shade was on site. Fades was on site. Okay. <laughs> so y'all have not prepared your children for life. And, and you got to do that because they out here in these streets embarrassing you, getting ate up and getting chewed out. So please do your job as parents and teach your children to be nice and have manners and respect their elders, be it auntie, unk, or we don't know. But but get them babies some water, please, because you have no business looking a strong 45 and you ain't crossed the stage and got your degree yet. Like that, that, that's not good. It's, it's downhill for y'all. And I know some of you are getting fillers early. You getting BBLs early. You doing all these things. Be clear. I do not talk down on anybody that chooses to get surgery since we all talking about looks and everything. But your grown woman weight typically don't settle into like your mid thirties. So essentially you're not even giving your body a chance yet. Keep on with your carbs Keep on with your chicken and waffles, and you're going to get them hips, thighs, ass, hips, and body. You're going to get everything you want if you just take your time, be patient, and, and, and let nature or whatever take its course. Okay? We grown. This, this is grown advice. And speaking of grown, I'm glad we have real music back. Some people are over this. Some folks are tired of hearing about it. I am not. Y'all know I, 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 I eat, breathe, and sleep reminding y'all that I'm a Gemini. So, of course, my favorite artists just happen to be Geminis. And, yes, K-Dot is one of them. Kung Fu Kenny is in my top five. 
I love him. And I love the fact that he is bringing people together. He's given the culture something to be proud of. Even if it came via rap beef, I don't care. Seeing a bunch of gang members on stage united, even if it was for the day. I don't, look, at this point, it's been such a mess out here in these streets. We'll take anything. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take anything. I want to take y'all back to a moment in time for me where we knew that K-Dot was somebody that's important to the culture with this bodies of work. So July 2015 in Cleveland, Ohio, we had the convening, the Black Lives, the, the Movement for Black Lives convening. So it was kind of a, I don't want to call it an anniversary. It was a meetup of like hundreds of activists all across the nation, I guess, to pretty much talk about what's been going on with the movement, police violence and all of that. Now, of course, it ended up being something totally different. And we ended up having a come to Jesus meeting with the uh, creators of BLM. That's a different conversation. I'll probably save that for August, whatever the case. While we were in this room having dialogue about what we did and didn't like about this convention, it not being what we thought it would be, the cops in true fashion were outside harassing somebody. And who they were harassing at that moment was a 15-year-old boy. They were trying to arrest him. For some reason, he was on a bus. They were trying to remove him. What they ended up doing was pepper spraying a group of folks that tried to not intervene and get in the way, but like, yo, this is a 15 year old kid. Where is his mother? Like, don't harass this kid. So we all rush outside. Right. So just picture it. It's a hundred activists forming this huge circle around this cop car and this little boy handcuffed and none of us would leave until his mother showed up. This went on for a good two hours. So at this point we got to render aid to those that they pepper sprayed a whole lot of yelling, a whole lot of chants, everything that was going on at the time, because, I mean, the protests were heavy. But finally, this young man's mom shows up. They release the boy. We all retreat back to the last few moments of this conference. And can you guess what song we started chanting? Yes, we're going to be all right. And as we we're chanting this, I kid y'all not, this random butterfly came out of nowhere and hovered over us. It was an activist in L.A. by the name of Ricky Hines. He was the one that actually caught it. And I would end up being on his podcast shortly after to talk about it. So that's my first podcast. But yes, that was one of the moments where you can't deny Kendrick Lamar's impact. And I understand he doesn't make bubblegum pop music. He doesn't make things that make for good TikTok challenges, but we have to have balance. Sorry, y'all, but even in 2024, black struggle is still real. We still deal with racism. We still deal with all these things. So that type of music is always going to be relevant, no matter how much y'all love Drake or Ice Spice, Ice Pumpkin Spice, Ice Latte, Ice fucking Cream, whatever you want to call it, a little big head girl. We have to have... <laughs> We got to have something for everybody. But some of us grown folks, we like lyricism. We like folks that talk about things. We like artists that, I don't know, read books. Shit. I just, I'm, I'm <laughs> everybody don't want to hear the Dr. Seuss activity all the time. Even though I'm a fan of Glorilla. And at this point, that little weird girl has my heart. I like her. I think she's goofy. I think she's country. Her music is for a certain group of people. <laughs> but we have to have balance. Now, as we all know, when black folks come together and we get along a little too well, somebody going to have a problem with it because, you know, what about us? Which is why I think there's so much discourse around this whole beef because a lot of folks identify with Drake. They love to attach themselves somewhat to the black culture, but you don't really care for real. You like to cosplay whatever you can, just like he does with these 511 accents. You identify with him, so that's why you side with him over Kendrick. And I mean, whatever, but... There was a podcast, a Mexican podcast, that felt like during Kendrick Lamar's Juneteenth concert, the Mexicans were not represented. So let's talk about this real quick. First of all, y'all say nigga more than we do, but y'all can't bring none of us home. But I'm going to save that conversation for a different day. But this goes to show that we can never have anything for ourselves. Now, be clear, I am here for black and brown unity all day long. But sometimes it's OK to have a black space the way it's OK for y'all to have y'all space. Let us have something for us every once in a while. And listening to the lyrics of Not Like Us, you got to know. The fact that you would speak about being underrepresented while also in the same breath saying you don't really know what Juneteenth means and you try to attach it to Selma, baby, you got to go back and read a book before you speak on this. I was, I got secondhand embarrassment for y'all. 
Not like us is saying sometimes people try to permeate the culture that's not really for the culture. And that includes y'all as well. Y'all like us to a certain point. Not all of y'all, but there is anti-blackness in Latino communities as well. But let's just be honest about it. And you never know how people feel about you until you have something for you. When it comes to black people, one thing we're going to do is stand up for all groups. Palestine, we out here. Asian hate, we out here. We fight for everybody, but when it's our turn, we don't always get that in return. Let's just, just be honest. And not that we're begging anybody to, but when we have a moment where we are celebrating us, we are allowed that. And, and we don't need pushback. If you feel like you're underrepresented, what do you think you should do then? Go throw a concert. Make a song, but y'all can't look at us as y'all social justice mammies and pappies for everything. Baby, we tired. We trying to raise our kids. We trying to survive. We still deal with pay inequity. We still have a lot on our plate. So forgive us if every once in a while we just want to breathe and, and pop out and show niggas and crit walk or see walk, whatever the walks are. I can't do none of the walks I, for one, just because of this whole thing. I wish I knew how. Because Russ Westbrook was having the time of his life. And y'all going to leave that man alone. When he is experiencing joy, let him have it. Now, there was another conversation. I got to get on this. This going to tie into friendship. LeBron was there at this concert. But unlike everybody else, he wasn't on stage. And people spoke about the fact that that's disloyal to his relationship with Drake. Why would he be there? Why would he be bopping to his song? That's a grown man. I feel a couple of ways about this, right? So if I'm friends with somebody, I don't like to control my friends. But if somebody has disrespected me in the worst way possible, low-key accused me of pedophilia, then came for, if you, I, I don't care, celebrity or not, I do demand a certain level of loyalty from my friends. I do. So I think it was Savannah that honestly didn't allow him on that stage because I think he would have liked to get up there. But for me, my big red flag with friendships is how do you, how do you navigate around folks that have an issue with me? So me, me and uh, I ain't gonna lie, me and LeBron would not be friends <laughs> anymore. It ain't just music. <laughs> it's not just music. This man came for me. You should be ready to go to war for me. That's just what it is. And a lot of y'all don't have friends. Y'all don't have real friends either. Some of you got folks that's out here being disloyal, talking crazy, entertaining folks behind your back. I got a phone call, not a phone call. I got a DM from a friend the other day after me seeing her being very frustrated online. And I, I said, you don't have to be petty. I'll be petty for you. Like, hand it to me. I'll take on that burden. She said, no, it's not worth it, but I would love the opportunity to vent. This young lady DMs me and says that she apologized to a friend for not being a great friend. And instead of that person accepting her apology, she instead let her know that I'm not the only person that feels this way about you. Backstory, the girl got pregnant and asked her what she should do because her relationship wasn't that strong. My friend suggested, how about you, if you're pregnant and you feel like you want to terminate it, that's what you're going to do. Fine, get your tubes tied. She didn't like that advice. Be clear, this friend is newly married. She finally got the man she always wanted. She just had her second child. Some of y'all have friends out here that are only comfortable with you at a certain level. Up until this girl got married and had these two kids, she was the single mother that was frustrated on the dating scene. You know, she had self-esteem issues and she met her king and she is now very happy. And I love it for her because I remember her being single. See, I'm one of those folks that no matter what's going on in my personal life, I'm going to celebrate love for my friends. I want that for you, especially if I know what you went through to get there. Not everybody operates that way. And they will harbor resentment to, with, towards your happiness until they find a reason one day to justify their hatred towards you. Not even necessarily hatred, but justify their feelings. And she justified it by her suggesting that she get a tubes tied. If you don't want a baby and your relationship ain't that strong, yeah, get your tubes tied. Because babies are permanent. <laughs> it is what it is. But after she and I talked, I, I didn't try to tell her what to do. But I said, it sounds to me like you don't have a great friend to begin with. Number one, you're going through postpartum. Y'all, stop reaching out to people that just had babies for advice. Do you know what they're going through already? You're trying to get back to yourself. You're trying to figure out who you are again. You're trying to love yourself again. You're not necessarily in a position to hold space for anybody. That's not being selfish. That's not being a bad friend. That's prioritizing. This is the area you're in at life right now. I simply can't be there for you. I have people right now that I haven't talked to in a minute. We are not in a space in each other's lives where we can hold space for each other. We got too much going on. 
and, and that's okay. Sometimes friendship is understanding this is a season where it's probably just you and God or it's just you and what you got going on, you and your problems, and us trying to come together, it's not going to work. But once we get through these seasons, we'll come back and we'll be stronger. I mean, sometimes that's what friendship is. It's not going to brunch and doing content with each other and being cute and tagging each other because both of y'all are it girls and you want to be seen together. Some of y'all confuse work for friendship. That's what it is. It's work. That is not your friend. <laughs> Go through something real quick. Hit rock bottom and see if you can give that person a call when you have nothing to offer them. See, see what type of relationship you got then. And quit, quit throwing the term friend out so doggone loosely. Some of y'all got associates and you're barely that. So, yeah, I want to keep it real simple today, y'all. I wasn't trying to throw shade at nobody, nothing like that. I just wanted to help the children. There's a lot going on in the world. Music, aunties, your fake friends. This is Cookie, the new chapter. So I look forward to seeing what kind of content I'm going to give y'all at 42. But I'm going to tell you what I ain't giving y'all. I still ain't got no man. <laughs> My kidneys still ain't been flipped. I think we are going on year three. I'm going to tell y'all what. When I do crack it open, it's going to be a Venus flytrap. He ain't going nowhere for seven business days. We not coming up for air. But until that time comes, whatever we got going on, <laughs> wear your mask, wash your hands, socially distance. And when you get a free moment, please remember to clean out your dirty bag. Till next time. <laughs> well, darling. There's only one God, darling.